ask the intrepid EC boss a couple of questions, if I may be allowed to. First of all, uh, uh, first of the questions, is the old register not defunct? And if so, given the time we have, what stops the EC from piloting the new register in Woolensey? It's a very serious situation. Uh, DI has raised it. I've heard a, other couple of voices also discussing it. What really will stop the EC from piloting the biometric register in Woolensey? It will be a perfect situation for that kind of uh, pilot, one whole constituency, people vote in a competitive election in one day. It, it simply mirrors the entire election. So why go back to the defunct register? Unless the register is not defunct, unless the old register still functions. That's an interesting question. The EC should be telling us something about it. And then I hear the commissioner saying two things at the same time. I believe those two things are mutually exclusive. One, he says that in reaction to the creation of districts, he is forced to create more, more constituencies to balance it. And that is why he has to go as high as 45 constituencies. In another breath, he says he's only exercising his constitutional duty to create constituencies. But if you look at it carefully, his constitutional duty to create constituencies is based on a review. A review could be upwards or downwards or stable. So if you are reviewing on your own initiative based on the population census, would you go as high as 45? Probably if he was reviewed on his own volition, it would be far less. So is it a question of the tail wagging the dog? Is the executive twisting the tail of the EC by creating districts and then the EC is forced to react? But if the EC doesn't come out and clarify why exactly you would want to create 45 constituencies? Yes, representation is critical. Representation is important. But quality representation is key. People want to be represented by functional and effective MPs, not necessarily by a number of MPs. So. Is the EC reacting to the creation of districts, or is the EC operating on its constitutional mandate to review constituencies? If it's reacting on the district situation, then all of us as a nation must look again at the law, a law which virtually predates the Constitution, a 1993 law that insists that constituencies must be created whenever new districts are created. That membership line there, something wrong there. But tonight we are interested in government <coughs> revenue and how it's being dissipated on corrupt activities. Just before then, do you realize that we still haven't heard from the government about conflicts of interest? Mr. George Abuaji, who is chief executive of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, is the candidate for Ahanta West. He's a politician, a candidate, and he's holding government office and we are paying with taxpayers' money. Who is the head of the Ghana Tourist Authority? Is it Mr. Julius Debra? And is he the candidate for Suhum? <laughs> Mr. President, after, as for as he didn't get here, we've given up on him. He's still sitting on the buoy board. And <coughs> he's, 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 I wonder whether Ayarga has also paid for the tractors, the 10 tractors which we were giving for, to him in the corridor. So we are going to talk about government revenue and how it's being dissipated in corrupt actions. Uh, our question to that really would be whether or not government is spending our money wisely. Uh, with me, to deal with those issues, Stephen Amwa, uh, I've always known you as a financial analyst, member of the MPP communications team, but inside you, you are an investment consultant. You're very welcome. Thank Let you. You are sticker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and next to you. <laughs> you too. Justice Abe Kunyutin of Fair, a policy analyst. You're both welcome. Thank, Thank you, you, very, Thank you much. very much. Now, uh, I, hear, I hear rumors that, uh, of course, I don't know whether they can manage the judiciary that way, but is it likely that Oyomi could be jailed late in the day, say November, and be pardoned in December after the election is lost? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you have opportunity to look at that. <laughs> but let's, let's look at <coughs> the regulations of the Public Accounts Committee and whether or not our hard-earned revenue is being dissipated in, in corrupt payments that really are not hitting the... You were showing me the article about uh, Mr. Paul Ose just before we sat down. Um, I think my greetings to our viewers this evening. Um, it's a very pathetic issue, seriously. And 
I think as a country, we only don't have to talk about it. It is time we stood up and pray to America. Because where Ghana is being driven to it, in fact, the unborn babies in our country are going to even suffer. I have never ever in my life, as a politician, as a Ghanaian, experienced this. In fact, Gangantuan, colossal, huge amount of corruption in our society before. I've never. And it's unprecedented. And I'm saying this dispassionately, holistically, and deep within my heart, I'm crying, I'm weeping. It's, 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 it's amazing. But just then, you know one of the singular pledges or pledge that the NDC made to Ghanaians in their 2008 manifesto? I want to quote their own manifesto. Today, Ghana, our dear country, is in the grips of multifaceted crisis. A crisis caused by hardship, incompetence, parochialism, and systemic corruption. And the NDC pledged to remove this creeping crisis. Systemic corruption. Systemic corruption. And that was the pledge that Professor Mills, the vice president, and the NDC team made to Ghanaians. But I think now on the continent of Africa, there hasn't been any single country that is as corrupt as Ghana under Professor Mills. This gentleman, Mr. Paul, said that you're talking about. I think you look at graphic, daily graphic, state-owned paper, 16th June 2012. Um, he was driving a car, in fact, a uh, Hyundai truck with registration number GW911. 3 to 9113Z uh, between Nkoko and Kumasi. And accidentally, a police car bumped into his car. So there was an accident. And after that, judgment debt that has been given to this man, old Ghana cities, is over 8.2 billion cities. Ask yourself, how much does a Hyundai truck? Even brand new one cost. 8.2 billion. Yes. Um, I, um, it's, very, it's a very sad, very pathetic issue. And when I ponder over these things, I saw look I Break talk it, to myself, I see I'm mad. In fact... This was before the Public Accounts Committee. Yeah, I yeah. think this week it will come. Look ahead for it. Live coverage of it, I'm sure it's supposed to come. Mm. Settlement for the damage of his vehicle was 300 and... 99,885.86. almost 400. 400,000, not 40,000. No, not at all. 400,000 yes. for damaging a vehicle. Thank you. And then the driver was paid for loss of the use of the vehicle. That was 328,800. 328,800 loss of use. Loss of use for 172 days. That's 172 days. Mm -hmm. And then replacement of the truck, 31,500. That is a new truck. <laughs> cost 31,000. I don't even understand the item. 500. <laughs> as, as a finance already the expert. first item had done what? <laughs> damage to the car. The you damage. are coming. <laughs> damage, damage I remember the this story. When we were having our primary education, there was a story of a guy whose parents uh, were illiterate uh, and that he was asked to buy geography. Uh -huh. But the parents were so, book. They were so stingy. Mm. So if you go and say, mom and dad, I need a geography that will cost me 10 Ghana cities. They will mm. not buy. So the guy will start, Joe Ponko, Gra Ponko, Fi Ponko, Geography Ponko. So by the time he finishes, mm. <laughs> he'll get the money that he wanted. <laughs> so you realize you that. collect money for you. Thank you. Gra and, Gra and, fee. and, fee. and then geography. Mm. And that's what NDC is doing to us. Mm. Replacement of the track, mm. 31,500. Mm. Preheater mixer, mixer in the track, mm. 23,703. And then medical expenses, 14,460. And then for loss of income, 30,000. You put all this together, this current currency or de denomination is 827,946.86. And that is over 8.2 billion organisms. What was the first item again? Um, settlement for the damage of his vehicle. 
I'm getting a bit emotional, so you can see I'm not of myself. No, I, I want our, um, our, our listeners to be very clear. There is an accident, yes. an ordinary accident. Yeah. A state vehicle, a yeah. police vehicle, yeah. hits another vehicle yeah. on the road. Yeah. So the state is liable. Yeah. And the state has to pay that person mm -hmm. out of the revenues we've collected. Mm -hmm. Taxes, what have you, government revenue. Yeah. And these are the <coughs> items for one vehicle. Yes. The, the settlement. <laughs> Almost 400,000 cities mm -hmm. for a settlement. Mm -hmm. Now, after the settlement... Damage of the car. Settlement. Settlement the, for dam damage of the car. Settlement for damage, damage of, of the, the car. car. And the driver was also paid for the loss of the use of the vehicle uh, wait, for so, 172. So, so you have settlement for damage of the vehicle, mm -hmm. almost yeah. 400,000. Yes. Then you have loss of use. Of vehicle for 172 days. For yeah. 172. So this, yeah, this implies that the car would be restored. And then put back to use. And then after that, in spite mm -hmm. of these two, then you are, the, he's paid the for driver. a brand new car. Yes. And the replacement of the truck. I don't know whether it's a... Trailer they are talking about, or is it trader or whatever? Trailer. Trailer, trailer yeah. they are talking about. And the preheater mixer in the truck. So, so <laughs> we just had an accident. We should be talking about the water in the, in the, in yes. the radiator is being yes, paid Yes, the for. one they used to. We should be thankful <laughs> they didn't pay for ties and the jacks and then the, the road signs and so other things. So, Bastiga, can mm. you just explain something a little here for me? Mm -hmm. uh, the second one says uh, the driver was paid for the loss of yes. uh, the use of the vehicle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the last one here also says uh, the driver was paid for loss of mm -hmm. use of, lo loss, loss of, of income. income. Yes. Does that not... Yes. Joe Ponko, so, 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 Ponko, Joe Graf So, so this is, this is so what simple. Ghanaians are faced with. This is a matter which is before the Public Accounts Committee, a matter that is asking whether or not our revenue being collected from us in the form of taxes and other incomes and profits are being used well. You have a situation where for a common accident, you are paying for loss of use and you are paying for loss of income. You are paying for the water in the heater, the radiator grill of the damaged damage vehicle. The you are paying for a replacement of the vehicle, and you are buying a new vehicle. Over 800,000 Ghana cities. 8.2 billion cities for one accident. If this is not theft, if this is not corruption, then you educate me about corruption. We are discussing the leakage, extreme massive gargantuan leakage of government revenue into areas where it's just mind-boggling. The kind of corruption we are seeing now, when you can pay <coughs> over 8.2 billion old cities for damaging one vehicle in one accident, to pay two, three times over for the same item, and it goes into the public account. So whether are we going as a country, where there's so much impunity, where people do what they like because a weak government, a weak presidency is unable to assert itself and put in any order. You know, Matt, uh, Newton, there's this rumor that uh, in spite of the issues with uh, Wyoming and others, it's likely that government will try and pull a fast one, you know, uh, uh, delay the trial and get him uh, into a point where even if he's jailed, he spends a short time in jail and then in December he's pardoned so that the MPP government this is very likely by the grace of god to come in uh, next year will not be able the, to the government's hand the will be tied and then all the names that have been mentioned will get away with it you know that kind of impunity where people have been mentioned and they are still sitting in their offices and they are still managing government revenue right thank you very much and uh, we'll first of all take the opportunity to say a very good evening to our cherished viewers across uh, our beautiful country. Now, this rumor <coughs> that you just make an allusion to is something that I've also heard in the course of the day. I don't really know how true that is. But then if that should happen, I wouldn't be surprised. Because if you cast your mind back, the last time I was here, you know, I made a... Uh, 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 an assertion that uh, the way that our nation at the moment is being run is uh, more or less like a circus. You know, where you have these clowns and 
animals and all that, you know, just to entertain people. You go there, you have fun, and then you go back home and, and sleep. We don't really seem to be, you know, uh, having uh, a sense of uh, proper governance in, in its true sense. Leadership that uh, uh, is focused and all that. So if something of such a nature should ever happen, I wouldn't be surprised. Because uh, this Wyoming case, you know, I have taken my time to actually go through all the documents, you know, since the whole issue uh, cropped up. <coughs> and quite recently, uh, Martin Hamidou has also been coming up with some revelations as regards the intricacies of this whole Wyoming affairs. And uh, all indication points to the fact that, you know, from what I have learned from the, the, the material, you know, covering the whole Wyoming uh, issue, I personally have come to uh, the point of uh, conclusion that uh, 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 the case is a pure case of state sanctioned thievery. Because I'm, I'm, I've come to this conclusion just uh, for the pure fact that uh, uh, Martin Hamidou, who was uh, prosecuting the case uh, in his capacity as an attorney general, you know, uh, issue cropped up. He ended up losing his job. And as usual, uh, the propagandists, you know, uh, uh, went out there on a, you know, a serious propaganda drive and uh, dragging the man's name in the mud and accusing him of uh, putting up an act of insolence before the president uh, during a meeting or whatever, who were not there. This went on for a while, and the man, in a way, also got agitated and came out. You know, and in one of his letters, he actually made it known to the whole nation that uh, he actually, you know, listed the names of people who were involved in this whole Wyoming uh, 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 thing, you know. And uh, was, it, was it just over the weekend, Saturday, another revelation also came up, you know, uh, through uh, the uh, benevolence of uh, our honorable gentleman, uh, Koku Baku, you know, uh, when he appeared on the uh, news analysis program from this very same outfit, where he actually produced uh, uh, a caution statement, you know, uh, uh, by Wyoming. And uh, it was a handwritten uh, material. So, I mean, there is absolutely no doubt that the thing was uh, from Wyoming himself. And in that material, you know, it is captured in that material that uh, from the beginning of this, when Wyoming actually started with his uh, issue of uh, by coming up with this whole uh, uh, suit against the, 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 the state, he was actually called to the castle. And it is all captured in that handwritten caution statement by Wyoming. He was called to the castle. And at, at a meeting, you know, uh, during, you know, at a meeting at the castle where they had uh, the presence of uh, the chief of staff, uh, the two deputy chief of staffs, uh, Alex Sebefia and uh, Valerie Sawyer, and uh, 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 Martin Newman, who is uh, uh, the substantive uh, chief of staff. You know, they were all at, the, at, at present, present at that no meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it is captured in the document. Mm -hmm. And when this, you know, all these things happened at the seat of government, but when the issue came up and it was, you know, it became uh, an issue all over the country, the president was confronted with it, and he said he didn't, he, he didn't know, and that is referred to Yoko and all that. So this rumor that is making rounds is, is not something that, you know, if it ever happens, it will be uh, uh, surprising to me. But <coughs> suffice it to say, if they should go ahead and, uh, you know, come up with this uh, uh, issue of trying to, you know, staging... Uh, uh, a case against Wyoming and then releasing him. <coughs> you know, uh, an issue happened in Los Angeles whereby this Rodney King, yeah. 
yes, was, you know, uh, arrested and beaten by the police and all that, mm. you know. And the case went to the court, and the police people who, who engaged in that dastardly act were set free by the courts. And the consequences, I believe you know the consequences. The courts, you know, uh, set the police people free, but the citizenry, of, you know, in whose hands the sovereign uh, 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 powers of the state actually res reside, they rose up. And there was a whole lot of confusion, and, and that decision was reversed. Yeah. And I can sit here and assure you that should that rumor mm. that you're talking about ever ha happen, that Wyoming is, you know, in a way jailed in November and is given a pardon in December, just back by word, you will see what will happen in this country. And, and I believe Ghanaians are not going to sit down for that fraud to be perpetrated on us. Sika. Do you think Nanado would tolerate this kind of situation? <laughs> I, I'm uh, trying to imagine Nanado in, in the leadership yeah. situation. Before I move on to this corruption thing, I think your question is a question that every Ghanaian should ask. Yeah. Let's be very honest. I'm not saying Nanado is an angel. He's not, of course. But he's the only single politician whose political career for the past 40 years I describe him as somebody with anti-corruption government that is spotless. It's without blemish. No single individual in our country can we point a finger that the man in, in, in pursuing his political ambition or career bought even a cola, just cola, with state funding. He was not even taking his pedium. You know the kind of man he is. Mm. One thing about him is that he doesn't really care about wealth for himself. Mm. He's somebody that has been fighting for society for a long time. Mm. If you're very close to him, sometimes I, I even think he overly does it. But one thing that we need to do, look, if a leader or a team or organization mm. tells you that, hey, give me your country, give me your mandate, I'll manage your resources to take care of the poor, make sure that I avoid corruption. You do know in this country today, Corruption has become headache. Corruption has become cancer. Corruption has become <laughs> diarrhea. It's our basic problem now. Everybody doesn't have a clue to it. So if you're looking for a leader, a leader that has a proven record. And for Nanado, that one, I mean, within the MPP fraternity, within the NDC, CPP, as a country, Nobody he stands out. Has ever one. He has it. I mean, let's not joke with it. He yeah. has it. There is no iota of even perception. Mm. You cannot even blink your eye over the kind of man he is when it comes to dealing with issues of corruption. And he's very fair. So my brother, it's an issue we need not to go there. It's one of his number one marketing tool that it is unprecedented. He stands the tallest in our country. I mean, we know he has it everywhere internationally. He knows he has it. He has that global man. They give him standing ovation all the time because no matter what you do, you cannot find him even using state paper for his own gain. So my brother, you shouldn't have even asked the question. <laughs> I think we need to move on. What I want us to consider is that this present government, mm. look, apart from Kwame Nkrumah, mm. no government in just a period of three years mm. has been able to have the influence mm. that under Professor Mess Ghana as a country we've had. In terms of, of our debt portfolio, it has been increased from 8.1 billion to 23.4 billion, almost 24 billion. Yeah. Mm. For 30 years of marketing our cocoa on the world market, the highest price over 30 years it was Professor Mays that enjoyed. And we had even the even the the the, 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 the tonnage. The tonnage was we also around million, one million. A million, yeah. In terms of introducing new taxes within two years, he has an unprecedented record. In terms of increasing a single tax. Over a thousand percent, he has been able to do that. MPP 750 million euro bond, NDC under Professor Mills enjoyed 350 out of that. The embryonic stage of our oil proceeds gave us over 400 million dollars for Professor Mills. My brother, if I keep on listening, the money that we've had, but just as the MTN advert, Yen Sakon, the small boy is still there. Watch the mother ask, Mommy, where is the money? The problem we are having with this government is the discretionary spending policy of this government. 
You know, state budget, we have two fold. Mm. The statutory, mm. that you can't do anything. Yeah. And the discretionary, yeah. whether you decide to use your money and pay judgment debt of almost 700 million, give money freely to people, or you use the money to expand school feeding so that all other schools will have it. Solve our hospital problems. Entrench the position of national health insurance. But you have a government whose pledge to the people of this country was removing the creeping crisis of systemic corruption. And you look at God. You call yourself a man of God. You look at the good people of this country, the Kayayos, our mothers that are selling plantain on the street, would giving their children a piggyback on their back under the scorching sun. They pay taxes, the mechanics, businessmen. Look at how people are suffering, teachers, nurses. And after collecting this money, you decide to share the money among yourself. And because you have control over the legal system, you have control over power. Look, on two occasions, our finance minister was on the floor of the parliament and said that they had exceeded their revenue collection target yeah. in this country, remember? Yeah. yeah. I do. So we have too much to spend. And this is the government that look at sports, what is happening. That is it, refreshment. Yeah. Almost 35,000. Then welcome reception, 125,000, almost 126,000. What's the difference? Every place. Look, now school buildings, that used to cost yeah. between 700 and 800. Thrice. Thrice. Within a period of two years, some of them are rocketing into over three billion. Mm. We are saying inflationary rate is also single digit. My brother, what Professor Mills and the NBC are doing, I'm just begging them in the name of God and the great Allah. I beg them for once they should have mercy upon Ghanaians. The only time in our political history that you need to buy sachet water before your child is operated on, Confanachi and Kolibu. The only time a woman had to give birth outside the hospital is in the hospital yeah. because there was no Not alternative a, power yeah, supply. Power. And then you take this amount of money and because they take propaganda and deception and lies can always let them consolidate power, they keep on doing this to Ghanaians. I'm begging Ghanaians, we should go on our knees and pray because this is unprecedented is in our political history. Terrible, yeah. God. We believe sincerely that there is no way Nanado Danko Ekufuado would tolerate such a regime of blatant dissipation of our revenue on matters that clearly do not improve our welfare. Nana is committed to our cause. He's incorruptible. He's courageous enough to stand by his convictions. And above all, he's compassionate. And he will genuinely and truly care for the welfare of the people who are vulnerable. We'll take our second break. Multi TV in conjunction with Syndicated Capital presents the decoder deal of the year. For a limited period only, purchase your original Multi TV decoder with Dish and get a Multi TV t shirt. The new and improved Digibox comes with a USB port to play your videos and music from your pen drive, voltage protector to protect your Digibox against power fluctuations, auto scan feature to automatically scan your Digibox for new channels, one year warranty, and a free souvenir t shirt. This offer is also available on high purchase in all 10 regions to all. All government employees, police, army personnel, and the general public for as low as 29 Ghana cities a month. Call 0302-242532 or 0204413484 for your original decoder today. Insist on a decoder with overvoted protection and a multi-TV t-shirt. Syndicated Capital. Welcome back. Newton. Yeah. Uh, you wanted to say something about and then I cut you off. That's right. Yeah. It, it is it's very simple. You know, uh, the December elections uh, basically is going to be between uh, the flag bearer of the MPP and that of uh, the NDC. And you see, uh, when you take the two personalities who have been elected by their parties to lead them into the elections. Uh, you can see clearly there is a vast, you know, uh, contrast uh, between the two of them because you have uh, a professor of law mm -hmm. who basically uh, had no idea about, you know, the rudimentaries of uh, politicking 
uh, he was actually sitting in somewhere, and uh, he was plugged out of uh, his uh, the comfort of his uh, uh, lecture hall by uh, the flight lieutenant Rawlings, and uh, you know uh, basically imposed on the NDC. And uh, the results is what we are we we are seeing at the moment. And when you take Nanadu uh, Dankwa Akufuadu, uh, I've studied his track record, uh, his political activism for over a period of 30 years. And you see, it is very rare in this part of our world to actually find someone who has been in the thick and thin of affairs of uh, his nation's uh, politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we speak, if you cast your mind, 208, NDC, and they are, you know, uh, propagandists, yeah. made the issue of corruption the topmost agenda yeah. on their campaign uh, uh, messages. They had flyers saying that they had bank accounts. Yeah. That could not the the bank account, the total money in that bank, bank account was more than the total GDP of our nation. So that, that issue is just passing gone. But then coming back to uh, the person Nanado, you know, he's been in uh, our politic, nation's political activism, you know, uh, agitated against military rule, and all that, NDC, uh, MPP, uh, after 30 years in the political wilderness, they, they, they gained uh, power. Mm. Narado, you know, served in that government. Mm. And in spite of all the hula balloon uh, against the M MPP, you know, in, in, by, in, in the area of uh, corruption, no uh, grain of issue of corruption has been able to, you know, uh, be brought yes, against. They haven't the been able to anybody for corruption. And, and, and because of that, just some few months ago, they were, they, they, instead of talking about issues and all that, they, they said, you know, uh, those things are not important. And that what the person, you know, stands for and all that were the issues they were going to, you know, campaign on. So, you know, taking the, 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 the personality of Nanadu, from what I personally know about him, I believe Ghanaians will, will, will do ourselves a very great uh, disservice mm. if we should ever, you know, repeat the mistake. And this is my personal our, opinion. Our revenue will be safer with them. Yeah, if we should mm. repeat the mistake. There will be stronger oversight. Yes, the mistake that we made mm. in 2008 at the polls. Mm. If we should ever, you know, go <laughs> to the polls in uh, the coming December, and repeat that mistake, mm. then God help us. <laughs> and the, the bottom line is that our revenue will, will be, be safe, safe with Nana. Because the man, the man has no issue of re such rec recklessness that we are currently experiencing. The man has no record in that, you know, since uh, and NDC. He has the courage to stand by his convictions. He will not allow people to do what they he, he has said that. He but said if you think you want to follow him, mm so that when he becomes the leader of the nation, you, you, you make money, then you better find yourself something, uh, something else to do. Because definitely, he's not definitely going to sit down for what we are seeing in, in our country now to, to, be go, to be going on. And, and I largely think uh, we are having all these problems uh, basically because the president that we have at the moment is, 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 is very weak. He's, on top of his yeah, head. he's very weak. He's very weak. And his weakness is uh, it was a whole lot of, you know, a caboodle of, you know, uh, <laughs> situations that are uh, uh, com coming together mm -hmm. to bring about that weak weakness. And, and if, we, if we should go into that, <coughs> I don't think we'll ever, you know, have uh, enough time to, go, to actually go, go into that. But basically, the man is weak. Okay. He's a very weak leader. Okay. You think so? uh, I think we did not actually critically look at certain issues and factors. Yeah. Uh, with all respect to Professor Mills, he's as individual, a life-fulfilled individual, somebody who is a professor, 
in society he's a high dame. He's my president. Yeah. I acknowledge and cherish that His Excellency. But before he became president, the perception Ghanaians were having about him or of him, I had a different perception entirely, contrary to what people thought he was. Mm -hmm. Because I had had an experience with him on KNUSD campus, September 2004. Okay. That was the day they launched the abridged version of their manifesto mm -hmm. for that election. Okay. Great Hall. I was yeah. then, I think, a teaching assistant or so. They all went to the Great Hall. He did two things. So I, I know him personally. What he did made me, anytime people are saying, oh, I have seen Bia in I laugh in my head. Mm. First thing, he said that 2000, before we took over, medical students were paying 2 million CDs. As of September 2004, yeah. they were paying 40 million CDs. Okay. Not only that, they had stated that emphatically without any ambiguity. In that abridged manifesto, I think I've forgotten, was I think page 19 or 22. Yeah, Item 11, <laughs> 12, and 13. <laughs> so I didn't know by then. The next day, I went to the administration for school fees. Yeah. Mm. And it had been grouped into sciences, applied sciences, and humanities. Yeah. Yeah. No student on USC campus, including medical students, was paying even more than 3 million as of that time. The next thing that he said was, Kofuo was useless, Kofuo was, no, he said reckless, he used some, you know, yeah. unpalatable statement. Yeah. Mm. And people were laughing, including the media, that Kofuo had used 7 billion old Ghana cities for grass cutter rearing. You know they introduced a yeah, project like uh, that. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, Kofuo didn't know his priority. Kofuo, in terms of Kofuo spending priority areas, mm. he didn't know what he was doing and they were laughing. So I did investigation into the issue and I realized that the money was 1.2 old Ghana cities and it had been raised by GTZ, a German donor yeah. company yeah. and a Greek ministry. Since then, when people talk about him, <laughs> I laugh. I mean, additionally, there was this issue about Shamukwe. May he so rest in peace. That famous house. Yeah. Player. Remember there was a corruption issue that they said the board members then had to vote. Thank you. Had embezzled money earmarked for the guy. I don't have details, but that was the issue yeah. around. That time our president was a member of the board. I'm not saying it's of power, but they said members. Mm. And by simple logic, well, if members yeah. and you're a member of yeah. the board, yeah. therefore, you know, remember small mathematics that we did. Yeah. The quality green issue, what happened? He was cited. Now, William case, at a point in time, he gave all indications that he didn't even know anything about, yeah. anything about no. it. Then later on, it came out that on two occasions, he had asked people that the constitution gave him the mandate to hire or fire. It's like my dad telling me, still, don't do this. And they did that. They give the money out. What has happened to these two people? Mm. So what I'm trying to say is that the man, when it comes to corruption, when it comes to being firm as a leader, he doesn't have the record, the proven record, that Ghanaians can invest their hope into as compared to another. Now. And that is the reason they try to raise issues that are never it true really about means, the man. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the fact of the matter is that the Nanado Dunkwa that we are talking about, for two things, his policy statement on education, his policy statement on industrialization, job creation, this statement is timely. It is relevant. It is feasible. And behind it, attached to all the backbone of the statement, is his proven record of having anti-corruption government, mm. government, sorry, that is spotless and without blemish, to ensure that these state resources will be channeled into education will be channeled into industrialization, will be channeled into areas that those in uh, Elibo, Inche, Asamankase, it's not just about this NDC, Jack, where are you project they are talking about. When you go to Tumu, they say, oh, Tumu, wait, wait, go to Aflao. Yeah, yeah, when you go, go to Aflao, they say, you take your time, go to Asamankase. <laughs> in Asamankase, so you go to the cities. The projects are no. You know how, how I call that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Shifting cultivation Thank developmental you. projects. Ice cream, mobile ice cream. You know, Shifting, you know, so Shifting cultivation developmental projects. One thing that we need in Africa <laughs> is a firm leader. Yeah. And one good thing about Nanadu, he has the best team in Ghana. MPP, the team that we have to manage the state. I'm not saying we are without them. Of I'm not course. saying MPP is of course. perfect. But, 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 but the, the quality of team that we have. Yes, definitely. Do you know that the, the money allocated to 
uh, government machinery. The Office president, government machinery. The, the president during yeah. your budget yeah. was bigger than that for agriculture. Yeah. Of was course, bigger yeah. than that for uh, youth and employment. Yeah. Was bigger. I can't believe Ooh. unprecedented. Indeed, Jesus the Christ. level of bad governance we are experiencing is oh, unprecedented. Gosh. And now we are it's expecting the team of very... Nana, backed by Baumia, capable, solid team to deliver us from the reckless dissipation of government revenue. It is the revenue that will save us. It's not the loans. If we don't manage the revenue well, the loans will also disappear.